Welcome to Built on Air, a podcast and video series about all things Airtable. In this episode, Carrie Craver demos for us the COVID-19 vaccination finder she built powered by Airtable and Webflow. Using Airtable as the backend, Carrie was able to develop a searchable website where users could find and share feedback on locations in the state of Texas that distribute COVID-19 vaccinations. Her setup involved using Integromat to sync records stored in Airtable to CMS collection list items in Webflow. The result was a user-friendly portal where visitors could quickly view business hours, appointment requirements, and general availability at a glance. Since recording this episode, Carrie helped launch a nationwide version of the Vaccine Finder through a partnership with Oracle. You can find an updated link to the tool in the description of this episode. Good morning. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, You are a digital product designer. Can you tell me a little bit what that entails? Yeah, so, um, you know, I I create products online. Um, I've been working in startups mainly, but in uh, software for about 20 years. And I have worked on all sorts of different projects. Uh, The most recent of which is this product to help people be able to find the COVID vaccine here in Texas with a little less hassle. Um, But yeah, throughout the years, I've created and worked on a lot of different products, mainly as a user experience designer. That is the the most common um, focus that I've had in my in my work. But, um, you know, my goal is generally to create something that people are able to use and then make it as good as possible. So that involves a little bit more than just the design um, from analytics to choosing which tools to use nowadays as a no-code builder and things like that. Yeah, um, in the world of no-code, the the ease of, of use is, is up at the top of the things that are, are focused on with products and how they're made. So when you decided to make or help make the um, vaccine finder, um, how how would you go about designing the user experience for a project like that, where um, hopefully everybody would want to get a vaccine. And right now, um, I'm not sure if it's the same in Dallas as it is here in Los Angeles, vaccine distribution is prioritized for the older population at the moment. Mm -hmm. The older population might not be as familiar with navigating websites. So yeah, (laughs) what kind of challenges did you see in this particular project? Yeah, that was one of the reasons that I thought um, my skill set was particularly good for designing this site, um, because I, I definitely paid attention to the fact that this is going to be something that needs to be easy to read and clear to, to navigate around. So um, especially in juxtaposition to the Texas website that they've created, it is black screen, tiny white writing. And it's just a challenge for, you know, people in their 70s and 80s, they're going to have a little bit less, you know, they're going to have some vision issues. Um, And so I wanted to focus a lot on making sure that it was easy to read and that things were very clear. And so uh, I I put a lot of thought as well into the forms uh, on the site to make sure that they are as simple as possible and that they're they're asking questions, the minimum number of questions in very straightforward ways. So one detail for that, for instance, is when I do ask people to tell us about a location, they are asked, is there a wait list for you to get on? Yes, no, I don't know. <laughs> is, can you get an appointment? Yes, no, I don't know. Can you walk in and get the, a shot the same day? Yes, no, I don't know. And those are just, that makes it so simple and clear. And those are really the only three questions that they have to answer. Um, you know, I give them the option to put their name in if they want. I give them the option to add a comment if they want. But I, I make it so that if they want to help others and tell them how their experience went at a specific location, it's really easy. Um, and I spent a lot of time thinking about that in my design, just like uh, focused on the forms first. How am I going to get people to actually fill this stuff out? Um, and it turns out that the getting people to fill out the be notified form was pretty easy. Uh, there's obviously a high demand to know when is the shot available near me. And so um, 
I definitely had the most success there. But people, people are definitely going to the site and adding reports as well. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. So that's obviously a very, very useful and very kind thing to do to try try and make this uh, dissemination, I think, of information more uh, accessible. Um, how did you go about when you were when you were doing this? Um, there's a, a thousand ways to build a website and, you know, there's a billion ways to build a form and all those kinds of things. How, what did you, what was your thought process of uh, the tools you would need to build this, I want it dead simple kind of product? Yeah. So, well, Airtable is just my go-to for everything with data. So that one was an easy choice. That, that was where I started. I built the structure for what I wanted there. Um, but that was where it stopped being easy for me. Um, I'm pretty new to using card. And so I gave that a shot first and that was what I launched. So I built this all on a Saturday uh, afternoon and that was what I launched with at first. And, uh, but it's, I did not like it at all. It was, pr it was pretty rough to look at. Um, and so the next day I rebuilt it using another product that I am very familiar with and love called UMSO. They used to be called Landon, but now it's umso.com. And they are a fabulous product. So I was able to embed the Airtable um, cards of the location, the gallery view of the locations, um, and to embed the forms on UMSO pages. And so I, I built the whole product there. And that was working pretty well. The one thing that it did not allow me to do is be able to send people to specific location pages. So like once they've picked the location they want to see and they want to see more details, um, since I wasn't able to do that, I then rebuilt it the next day using Webflow, Integromat and Airtable. And that's where it has been since then. Um, so it, it was definitely, it was a build, see if I get some momentum. Oh, I did rebuild. Okay, now I gotta do this next thing, rebuild, which is, it's great that no code tools allow you to have that flexibility and move quickly. So I built it three times in four days. Um, you know, that's not possible with old software methods. <laughs> um, and I probably, I'm not sure I would have done the project if I had started with the Webflow Integromat Airtable method, just because it took some more time. So, um, and if I wasn't sure people were going to use it, I might not have taken all the effort to get that out there at first. So it kind it worked pretty nicely for me. Um, there are still some things that I wish could be a little bit different. <laughs> I wish I could add a little bit more functionality, but for now, um, I'm pretty happy with where it is. Well, I mean, I'm glad I'm glad we got that uh, history of the project uh, because a um, I'm pretty sure we've mentioned websites uh, built in Webflow that get data from Airtable on the podcast before, but we haven't really talked about it in detail, if I can recall. So, um, you know, it's just nice seeing that um, I know that it's a particularly common integration Webflow and Airtable to build. Um, they have a, a CMS component, which does, as you said, you're able to have one um, item in your database and give it its own automatically generated page using Webflow on your site. So you don't have to build the same template right. of pages a thousand times over. And with uh, Dallas is a large city, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, COVID centers yeah. in Dallas or in that well, Dallas area. I actually did all of Texas. I have 1400 locations. Well, by George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I wasn't going to build 1400 pages on them. So I'm pretty sure. I mean, I should know this off the top of my head. I'm sure te Texas is, is either the third or it's, I think it's the third most populous state in the United States behind New York. Right. and California. So that is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of data that you're tracking, a lot of users that you are, um, you know, intending to get to your site. And yeah, there's 
45 million people, I think, in Texas. So yeah. a whole, hopefully a, a number of them are going to get the vaccine over the next few months. Yes. And hopefully a lot of them will, you know, what you've done is, is make the information as easy as possible uh, to understand and to get to. Now, you did mention that there are some features that um, you would like to add that aren't currently available. Mm -hmm. um, I've been known to spitball during these podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll probably get to it when we, uh, when we walk through it in the demo portion. But um, it, it, is, it is nice uh, hearing the history of a project, if you will. Like uh, we built it with um, one combination of services and it was okay. And then we built it with another and it was, it was all right, but still not quite what you need. And then we built what we have now, which is yeah. functional and great but even then could still use a little bit more. And I think that reinforces this idea of um, the difference between like an all-in-one solution provided by one software provider or, or service provider, and then making your own combination of services. And as a product designer, I'm sure that's something you're very familiar with. It's just oh, yeah. you have to sometimes, sometimes you just have to pull in different services to create the product that your client needs. Absolutely, yeah. So in this instance, one of the other tools that I didn't mention yet was that I'm using JetBoost, which is part, which a lot of people use on Webflow. It's a great tool. And um, I'm using that to be able to do my search. So uh, I feel like I would love to be able to have search by distance from zip code, for instance, but I mean, that's not something I know how to do. And so, you know, I don't, I have the field as the zip code field as a, just a text field and I don't have it as a location field. That's something that I wish Airtable did have. There are very few things about Airtable that I'm like, oh, I wish it were better in this way. But that is one specific one is that I wish the location were a thing. Yeah, uh, as, as like a field type. Maybe. Yeah. And I think Google Tables, their competitor that they came out with to compete with Airtable has that, but that makes sense since Google has all the data of locations of everywhere in the world. Well, um, true, but I, I've, I've thought that as well. I mean, it would be a nice data type uh, to have. Um, mm -hmm. Like they would probably have to do it where it, it would be the whole address is in one field. Um, that would be fine. That'd work so well for this for me. Yeah. <laughs> instances like that it would be great um with the field i work in we everything is related to a place mm -hmm. on, on the earth and so it would be nice if we could just be more direct about where something is physically on the planet and it, a field type as you're saying would be a great addition yeah but I was still able, I mean, people are able to go and type in uh, either their city name or the name of a specific location and it, it's able to filter down to just those items. So it works. Um, and then I did a couple of groupings like North Texas and uh, Central Texas. I just kind of grouped uh, those. And so people can search that way, but that I was having to do manual. And so those are the only two areas of Texas that I got to. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's not as good as if they could put in their zip code, but it's also something I could create in a couple of days. So <laughs> it's I mean, out there. <laughs> at the end of the day, you made something that works and um, why don't we just take a look at it now? Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so I wanted to make it just kind of clear, like this is what we're doing. You're, we're, we're pulling information from Texans who've gone to different places and they're gonna let you know what's going on. And so then I just kind of keep giving a little update each week because everything's been changing. At first, they just sent them all out to, to pharmacies, I think, and there really weren't very many available and it was kind of slow, but um, I, I just wanna let people kind of know what's going on. Um, some people have signed up to be notified. And so I've kind of told them right now that the notifications are on hold just because I don't know how to notify them because they don't know which places are getting vaccines um, by and large, mostly the counties are doing the mass vaccination event. So I'm kind of trying to let people get an overall sense of that. And then this is really the core of the site. 
that they're able to search for places. And so for instance, here, um, Parkland is one of the main locations in Dallas that's being successful at giving out lots of shots. And so now I have um, here are the reports that people have brought in, not really wait list appointments or same day shots. However, um, some people are telling about the walk up weekend, um, which is where you can get in line at, in the middle of the night, uh, basically 4 a.m. and get an appointment. Um, but you can see that different people have, have added ways that they uh, were able to go there and get things done. Um, like even telling you like they scheduled the second appointment at the same time, these kind of details make people just a little bit more comfortable and know what to expect. Um, so uh, this one is again, that walk up weekend. These are one, it's one of those mass vaccination events, I guess, or what people are calling it. And um, they basically told about the whole process. You know, you have to get there early, 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> yep. um, but you're still able to then come back and get your appointment and get your shot at the appointment later on that day. Not an ideal situation. I mean, they shouldn't be, I don't think they should be trying to make the, the oldest and the sickest of our population drive at 3 a.m. But, you know, <laughs> like if that's what it takes, I guess some people have that ability to do it and, and are making that happen. But, you know, in an ideal world, that would, uh, that would change. But um, I would love to show you how a little bit about how I connected Integramat, if that's to Airtable for this. I would love to see it. Before we move from this page, though, I do yeah. point out um, uh, it makes sense. You were saying earlier how you made your forms dead simple. Is there a wait list? Yes, no, I don't know, et cetera. <laughs> um, seeing these reviews for one place, it kind of makes it clear why you would want to do something like that because with every location in Texas there's not going to be you don't want to have a drop down field for the waitlist question like there's a waitlist all the time there's a waitlist sometimes there's a waitlist you know only on the weekends and things things like that and so the way you've structured it 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 does it makes it a little bit more um it, it, put, it puts more emphasis on reading what the other reviews have said so that you have a more clear picture of what this particular location's um, characteristics are without you having to account for every single possible combination of services and opening times and whatnot and having that as a drop down, for instance. Yeah, yeah. I started doing some of that in the beginning, some more details, and I was like, this is just I can't, I gotta just ask the three, cause that's what people care about. Can I walk into this place and get a shot today? No, okay, can I get on an appointment? No, okay, can I get on the wait list? No, okay, I gotta go somewhere else. <laughs> you know, and I mean, that's the order. Yeah. Are you gonna give me the shot right now? Do I have to come back? Can you just call me later? Or, okay, you don't want, you're not gonna give it to me, who else is? <laughs> so that's. <laughs> that's the flow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you want to show the Integramat combination um, yeah. or connection, yeah. there, let's, let's take a look. Yeah. Okay. So here is the experiences update that I did. Mm -hmm. And so I had it grab, let me show this is my table from, um, in, from Airtable. And I have just a few fields basically and um, okay so I grab I set this to connect to this table and mm -hmm. it always takes just a second to load but I want to show so I picked my experience is new that's what this table is called um, and then the last mo modified date is the trigger so once that happens uh, once that changes then uh, it'll set off um, creating a new item. And I did add this just to make sure that it doesn't already have the Webflow ID. Because um, in the beginning, I was, uh, there were some things that got a little messy and it had some updates and some not. So um, 
I, I always add, I was adding in the Webflow ID here as well. So um, anyway, so I just went through and made sure that each field from my Webflow CMS was connected to the fields from my Airtable. So here's one of the things that I felt like I, um, I really like the solution I found using this project. So the way that they map single select fields is really weird. And so for instance, get to um, one where there's a bunch of the answers on here. Uh, oh, I had the wrong table open. Okay, that would be why. Okay, yeah. So here we go. You can see the appointments, the wait list, and the same day shots. So you also see that here in Integromat, it gives this long string of valid values. I don't know why you can't just pick your value and, and copy it in, but so I didn't want my Airtable to give it this value of no, I don't know, and yes for appointments because it's looking for these strings. It's not looking for yes, no, and I don't know. So those are I think the unique ID for the Webflow version of no, yes, I don't know. Exactly. You're, that's you're absolutely correct. That's yeah. really obnoxious. <laughs> and so here's what I did just to make it so that it would work is I basically wrote this formula that said if appointments equals no in this column, make this the answer. And if appointments answers yes, make this. And if it answers, I don't know, make it this. And so I just use that as a formula field. And so instead of having appointments be the field that I pull in here, um, which is one of my choices, uh, I pulled in, instead of appointments, I pulled in appointments copy. And, you know, I obviously could have named it whatever else, the code or appointments code or something like that. But I was, I just kept it as appointments copy. Um, and I did the same thing with waitlist and the same day with the same day shots, the same thing. And so that makes it so I don't have to go in there and manually ever do anything to, when those come in. Um, it's a little hacky, but it works and it keeps it automated and going. But I had done some other solutions first and I'm happy that I finally stumbled upon a simple if <laughs> this answer this is the code. If this answer, this is the code. And since this is only three questions and only three options for each, it didn't take that long to go and grab these. Yeah, but so that was that was nice in a way that it kind of kept it going. Um, but yeah, so then it creates the item. And then the last thing that I have it do is just so that I can make sure um, that the I know that that one has been added is, let's see where my Webflow ID field is. Yeah. So I make sure it goes and it adds the Webflow ID back to my Airtable uh, table so that it's uh, so that I know that that one has been updated. And by doing that, I just told it to go to this field and add the item ID from the Webflow CMS. Yeah. And so that it really, it keep, it lets me keep things organized. Um, so it's, this really wasn't too complicated of a way to set that up. Um, you know, I did have to set up the CMS in Webflow first, and that took a little bit of time as well, but not too much. Um, and now they just run. I haven't had to touch the scenarios in, I don't know, I think two or three weeks. I have them set so that it's like, it's about every 10 minutes after somebody adds their location update, it, it doesn't run instantly. It takes a little bit of time, um, but it's working <laughs> and I don't have to touch it. So, And as we saw, it, it was all, it's really, it's only three steps. I mean, the router was in there, but you know, we'll four steps, if you will. Um, a very simple Integromat uh, recipe. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah, it, I, it certainly as far as, as these go, it's it's pretty simple <laughs> and it just works. You know, I've set up plenty where they don't just keep working. <laughs> the, 
the first two or three days, I kept coming back and expecting it to break and something to have gone wrong, but it, it hasn't happened. And, you know, at this point, it's just kind of going and, and updating and not too many updates a day, but some. And yeah, I'm every now and then. You have a similar one for location updates if you add a new um, place where a vaccine can be retrieved. Exactly. Yeah. Where either I add something new or some of these titles, they just weren't exactly the way that the, the place is called, for instance, like this one, actually that T should be capitalized. So I was going in and making some of those edits and I wanted those to show up as well. Sure. Yeah. All right. So that is, um, is there anything else that I should show specifically? I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, when you're on the website, does it, um, so we saw with that one example that you showed that some people said it had a wait list and some people didn't, does your website say like X percent of people say it has a, a... no, okay. well, and, and that's one of the things, um, I actually had some people from Oracle reach out to me and they are working on rebuilding this. Mm -hmm. And so, um, there are some things like that that we're going to be able to add into the site that they're going to launch hopefully soon. <laughs> um, so it's going to be rebuilt again. Yeah, I'm not doing this rebuild. Um, they are, but they're going to be able to actually launch this to somewhere between 45 to 49 states. And uh, so it's going to, hopefully it's going to cover almost everybody in the U.S. And we're adding a thumbs up. So um, right here on these, we're going to have a thumbs up that says this information helped me and a thumbs down that said, um, this something here is, uh, misleading or wrong. And just so that we can kind of gauge which information is most helpful and sort that to the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As well as, you know, we have the date and, and obviously the ones where it says there is stuff is what we would like. Um, and to be at the top. Now, those won't necessarily go to the top of a specific location, but they may go to the top of kind of list whenever somebody types in uh, their zip code, which is another thing that they're going to be able to do. So I'm really going to be happy when somebody can come to the homepage, go right here, type in their zip code, and then be able to see all the places within, I think the choices are like 10 miles, 20 miles, five miles, and 50 miles of your house. So, you know, it's, they're definitely able to do some, some features that I'm not. So um, that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I wish that Endeavor all the luck. Um, I, I have a couple of ideas of how this specific iteration, you know, maybe could do um, some, something along those lines, but I mean, it would be more more complications than it's probably worth since it's already being rebuilt anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's been an interesting thing. I'm cause I'm holding off on making updates cause they're rebuilding it and they're going to be able to do more than I possibly could, but it's also it just the no code builder in me wants to keep updating it. And yeah. you know, I, they're almost ready to launch and almost ready to launch, but they still haven't. So I'm really excited to be working with them and their team is great. They're, it's just the nature of, of kind of who they are and what they're doing, that the speed is not the same. It's yeah. a little slower. <laughs> yeah. So did they approach you or did you approach them? No, oh, they approached me. Yeah, I was blown away. Um, somebody reached out and said, hey, I'd like to help. What can I do? And I said, oh, uh, at that point, I was still trying to get the CSV file for the whole 1400 list here of the the locations yeah. and um and he got back to me I actually got that from somebody else but he got back to me after that and we kept talking and he said well I would like to have you know oracle help not just me and I was like okay what yeah let's do this and uh yes yeah, so I've been working with them for the past uh two or two or three weeks and um, hopefully, you know, they're getting really close. They've got a whole lot of it built and I can see it, but it's just not, it's just not completely done. So they're not ready. Um, but hopefully in the next couple of days, it'll be launched and um, 
yeah, most of the, the site will be from their build. I think some of the pages are still going to stay from my build, like um, uh, my contact carry form and things like that. The ones that aren't all about the process and the finding the vaccine. Um, so we're trying to keep it so they do just the stuff that's, uh, that's really hard. Will it be the same URL or will it, will it be moved to a different? Yeah, so we're, I'm going to launch it to a different URL. It's going to be find vaccine USA because it's not just Texas at that point. Um, and yeah, I won't, it would, it, I'll probably redirect this one to that after I'm sure that that one's working well um, after a couple of days. But yeah, it's well, going to be the same process and, and the same kind of layout and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, this episode will come out, you know, at least a week, um, perhaps two after it was recorded. So um, there's, there might be a chance that the new website will be available at the time of this episode's release. And so just want to throw that out there. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, find vaccineusa.com. That's going to be the URL. Excellent. Um, Last, last, last thing I want to just ask, when you are making this website, did you pull this, uh, your initial list of locations from a source? Was there like an API that you used or just like, yeah, did someone just have a CSV file that you could like download and then add to your, your table? Yeah, that's a great question. So it was kind of a combination of things. At first, I just wanted to get started. And mm -hmm. so I started just doing data entry the whole sun Sunday. So I launched it on Saturday and then Sunday I did data entry for, I don't know, 10 hours. Ugh. Trying to add a bunch of the data for Dallas and Austin. And then I started asking people, please help me <laughs> get the CSV. And I run a group called North da or No Code Open Coffee Club on Wednesday nights. And one of the gentlemen from there and then um, a person, a, a woman from Reddit, they both sent me it the same night it, within like 20 minutes of each other. I'd been searching for like three days and they both got it to me. And so I was ready to just upload that and have all the, all the locations. And so I think it was uh, that Thursday um, that I was able to launch to all of Texas. But at first, the first couple of days, it was really just Dallas and a few places in Austin. But with that, I was, a, I was still able to get on um, the local news because this only works if people know it exists and if they're going there and adding the information. So I was really trying at first to be on the local news in the evening to let people know about the product. Yeah, makes sense. And I've certainly been there where I've been like searching for something for days. And then I'm like, man, I really wish I could find this precise thing and then someone in my network is like oh you mean blank it's right here yes. <laughs> why weren't you in the search yeah it's a little frustrating the state doesn't just put that as a, a link so that people could yeah. help but you know that's not i guess it's just not how they think and and the data scraping apparently wasn't that hard data scraping is just not something that i'm great at <laughs> Well, it's a completely different skill set, but I'm, I'm glad you were able to get um, so much data from just reaching out and now you have all of Texas covered and soon, you know, the vast majority of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be exciting. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on. We will have links to the current iteration at this time, and then we'll include a link to the future um, destination um Wonderful. which will cover all of the united states and you know just as a disclaimer in case i mean this is pre-recorded if the website isn't quite there yet it will be uh, <laughs> it is coming yes yeah yeah unknown eta <laughs> mm -hmm. well thank you so much is there anything else that you want to bring up or anything that you want us to link to our audience um you know uh, part of this that motivated this is I'm going through a fellowship program called Be On Deck, or the website is beondeck.com. The program is on deck, and they have a, one specifically for no coders. And part of why I created this was because I didn't want to go into that program not having a live product that was out there. 
I couldn't have imagined the uh, success that this would have and the attention it's getting, but it was really motivating. A motivating factor for me was to go into that program and have something to be able to show the other uh, fellows in the in the in the group because they their work is so good and so many of them had amazing things that it really pushed me. And then now that that program has started, it is unbelievable. The if if you are a no code builder and you want to push your skill set and be surrounded by a community of other encouraging and motivated no code builders, I highly recommend that program. It's been wonderful to me. Great. Beyonddeck.com. Yes. Excellent. And I love that. <laughs> I need a project to show. Let me make a product that makes the entire state of Texas healthier. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, when you're searching for an idea, you never know where they're going to come from. And it just kind of naturally fell in my lap. because My dad was like, where am I going to go? How is this going to work? I'm just going to call every day. I'm like, hold your horses. I'll do, I'll try and help. I can build it. We have the tools. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was my exact thing. I was like, all right, I'm off. <laughs> Leave me alone. I got to work. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it. Thank you so much for doing so. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me, Camille. I'm really excited to get to talk to you. Great. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give it a like or hit us up on social at Built On Air. We always love to hear your comments and suggestions. And don't forget to subscribe to catch new episodes when they release. It helps us keep the podcast going.